Hey guys, welcome to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So we're back with the patch 3.4b review. So this patch actually has quite a number of changes as you guys can see, and quite a number of huge buffs as well in my opinion, especially on Kai'Sa but we'll get to that a little bit later on. <clears throat> First up, what we have is a new champion Vex. Um, she's going to be released in one week's time. And she's like an anti-mobility mage that is meant to be played in the mid lane. And it's actually a relatively new champion even on uh, League PC. So she's definitely going to be really fun. She can engage with like her ultimate and her fear. And at the same time, she kind of really counters mobility um, champions like for example, uh, Vayne, Akali, etc. Like any champion that dashes a lot. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see how she affects the meta. And next up, we have something actually really interesting. We have the Supreme Sales Promotion. So you can buy a box. So like it's like some kind of uh, hex tech box. And buying a box gets you a chest. So it's kind of a little bit confusing. You can get either 400 Poro Coins or one of these chests. We can You can get the uh, Rare Skin Chest, Epic Skin Chest, Legendary Skin Chest, or the Supreme Sales Skin Chest. Of course probability of getting something that's not a skin is half and probably probability of getting a skin is half uh, the other half and of course getting the rare skin is going to be the most um, common kind of skin you're going to get however after 10 bucks um not after 10 boxes for the first 10 boxes the probability of getting the supreme cells uh, chest is going to be increasing and on the 10th box i don't know why i can highlight this but on the 10th box it's going to be 100 percent. there we go and then it will reset and then on the 20th box you're guaranteed to get the legendary skin chest and then on the 30th chest you can get um, the other supreme cells chest so basically after 30 chests you can you are guaranteed to get both Z and set and canon you can get it through uh, purchasing a pass so depending on how much one chest is it's not really as gacha as you think. It's sort of the same thing as Cosmic Master Yi and Lulu where it was technically a gacha system. This is also a gacha system but you do have guarantees in place. So I think that having this kind of gacha system is fine. You still have the excitement of rolling for a skin but you do have that safety net of getting the skin that you want. Okay, so on Vex's release, we have Vex's bingo and also Supreme Cells has an event as well. This is the one that was postponed um, like a couple of weeks ago but at, at this point. Alright, so now into the champion changes. Corky is getting a relatively huge buff. He's getting health per level, armor per level, and mana per level. Now, mana per level is probably the most significant one in my opinion. He's getting an additional 17 mana per level, but which isn't a lot. But when you, when you, when you multiply that by 14 levels, uh, 14 times 17, I don't know what's the math on that. But... That's a significant amount of extra mana when you get to like higher levels. And we all know that Corky has big mana issues. So this is going to help him a lot. And he's going to be able to cast a couple of extra spells at higher levels. Fast Rose Brown cooldown going down by one second. This is really not going to matter too much. One second isn't too significant. But the Gatling Gun, the um, AD ratio per second is going up from 40% to 60%. So this is going to deal him a lot of extra damage. And the total AD ratio over the entire duration is going up by a huge amount as well. Cooldown going down by 2 seconds. So overall, this is going to be doing a lot of damage. And take note that this was just buffed um, at the previous time when Corky's package was nerfed as compensation. So Corky's Gatling Gun is not going to be really, really strong. So Corky, as a champion, I already think he's really strong. But of course... <coughs> Excuse me. Of course, this is going to make him even stronger. Okay, so Darius. Health per level is going up by 11. And his W Crippling Strike is getting a fixed cooldown of 5.5 seconds. Now, this is a, a nerf in the late game because it used to be 5 seconds. But it's a huge buff in the early game. Uh, of course, overall, this is going to be a huge buff. Because losing only 0 0.5 seconds cooldown in the late game is so worth it for, you know, getting... Uh, so much, not so much, but it's like one second lower cooldown in the early game because normally Darius maxes this last. You normally max Q then E first, so you max your W last. So this is going to be really helpful for Darius um, being the 1.1 their ability and just getting extra health per level just helpful, but overall changes aren't too big here. Alright, now Gwen getting another round of nerfs, um, rightfully so. However, the nerfs are really only targeting Gwen in the jungle. So here, if you guys take a look, her... 
passive damage to monsters is going down from 4 plus 4 percent to 2 plus 3 percent so basically they're just hitting her jungle clear again and the um, redu cooldown reduction on her E doesn't uh, trigger when you're do using it on a monster anymore and its actual cooldown reduction whoever you hit is going up at the earlier ranks because it's obviously a little bit too strong that you're getting uh, your E up like permanently when you're chasing someone down however um, this is Gwen as a champion in the top lane is still gonna be like about the same strength, so she's still gonna be really good. But Gwen in the jungle, uh, I feel that her clear is gonna be so much worse after like two rounds of nerfs to uh, monster damage. However, we all know like from what happened with Jax, where Jax's passive doesn't stack on monsters, we all know that people are still gonna play Gwen in the jungle anyways. Even though her clear is really bad, so I don't know how I feel about this because this is only gonna lead to a lot of you know, people still playing her in the jungle despite her getting nerfed in the jungle and they're just gonna have a really slow clear and they're not gonna have a good time and if they're on my team, well, I'm not gonna have a good time either. So, same story with what uh, happened with Jax last time. Speaking of Jax, he's getting um, an extra 7 health per level. Uh, I don't think this is re really too significant, um, so it doesn't really matter that much. But the one that actually matters, look at the Kai'Sa buffs. So Kai'Sa, on her Q, AD ratio per missile is going up from 40% to 45% and the AP ratio per missile is going up from 25 to 30%. Now if we go for the new like Rift Maker build on Kai'Sa, this AP ratio is actually going to matter. So AD ratio on Isolated Champion is going up from 90 to 101.25, AP ratio on Isolated Champion going up from 56 to 64, uh, Evolved AD ratio on Isolated Champion is going up from 150 to 168, and Evolve AP Ratio on Isolated Champion going from 93 to 112. So, if you guys remember, which you guys probably don't, but a couple of months ago when Kai'Sa was the best ADC in the meta, this was pretty much the nerf that she got. She got nerfed on her Q damage per missile, Q AD ratio per missile, AP ratio per missile, and her isolated, isolated damage. So this is pretty much going to revert all those nerfs and this I think will make Kai'Sa really really strong. Like the buffs that she's getting, the percentage is like 10% here. This is another like um, nearly 20%. Like the, the ratios are insane. The buffs to the ratios are insane. So I think Kai'Sa is going to be really really strong right now. I'm going to try to of course spam a little bit of Kai'Sa and probably make a video on her uh, to just show you guys how strong she really is. Now Miss Fortune. I personally don't feel Misfortune is really strong, but we've seen from the, the, the CN server win rates that she's a top win rate ADC, so she must be strong in some way. Um, the bullet time, AD ratio is going down by 10%, and the total AD ratio going down from uh, 1020% to um, 90%. I'm assuming total AD ratio is after you account for uh, each and every wave of the bullet time, I'm assuming that what, it, what that's what it is. So. Uh, basically, overall, she's just getting lower AD ratios, which kind of sucks for Miss Fortune because you're really only picking her for the ultimate. Uh, okay, maybe the strong laning phase as well, but uh, yeah, this is gonna hurt Miss Fortune quite a bit. 10% AD ratio cut off the ultimate is pretty significant. So here they're trying to nerf Olaf out of the jungle back to the Baron lane, which is sort of what they tried to do with Gwen, what they tried to do with Jax, what they tried to do with Wukong, uh, but. We all know that people still play these peop uh, these champs in the jungle, even though they're not so good anymore. So he's getting a base mana buff of 40 and base health regen buff of 3. This is going to help him, of course. M I mean, he's it's going to help him in the jungle as well. It's going to help him in the Baron lane, but it's also going to help him in the jungle when he's clearing. But the main thing is his passive. Instead of getting 1% attack speed per 1% health loss, it now scales based on level. So at early levels, you only get 0 0.6 um extra attack speed per 1% health loss. This is what's going to affect his jungle clear because Olaf generally gets below half health in the jungle and because of that he gets high attack speed to clear jungle camps quickly um, but if you only have 0 0.6 instead of 1 your attack speed is going to be slower and therefore your jungle clear is going to be slower whereas in the Baron lane this doesn't really affect things too much because you do trade with people but you're not standing there smacking people um, like for a couple of seconds in a row unless you guys are just having some kind of auto attack battle or something but this is gonna hurt his jungle a lot more than his Baron lane and but the undertow cost is going down um, you know in the early game of course this helps his 
laning phase a lot more than his jungle because in the laning phase you can actually use this to toss it chuck it at your opponent laner whereas in the jungle your main damage comes from your e as well as your w giving you the extra attack speed and life steal this um q doesn't really matter too much for jungle clear so overall basically they're trying to kick olaf out of the jungle and into the baron lane not too sure how i feel about that but i think that olaf is still going to be a pretty good jungler at least with this set of nerves they're going to need another couple of rounds of nerves to kick him out of the jungle in my opinion Alright, so next up we have Pike. So Pike, in my opinion, is already in a really strong spot. I don't really think he needed buffs, but clearly people, either his win rate is too low or, and people haven't really been playing uh, him too well, or he really isn't as strong as I think. But his Ghost Rider Dive, his W cooldown, going down by one second at all ranks. And Phantom Undertow, which is his um, E cooldown, is going down by 1.5 seconds at all ranks. So no real changes to like damage or anything like that but he's getting his spells up more often to allow him to you know escape more easily more often which is pretty annoying if you're playing against pike so good pikes will definitely make really good use of this and he's going to be even better now riven gets it gets a buff as well i don't really think she needed a buff either but her health per level is going up by 10 so therefore her, her total health eventually goes up from 21 20 to 22 60. pretty minor enough um uh, pretty minor buff, sorry, all things considered, but it is there. Now, Samira finally getting a nerf. I think this is very well deserved. Although I play a lot of Samira, I do know that she needs a nerf. Uh, she's way too strong at the moment. Her Daredevil Impulse, which is, of course, her passive. Movement speed per grade going down uh, from 3.5 to 2.5. Therefore, when you're at S rank, instead of getting 21% movement speed, you get 15% movement speed. Now, this is actually really significant. Why is this significant? Because a lot of times... Samira, especially when she gets like a kill and a reset, she has to chase uh, people down and the movement speed you get from your passive really helps when you chase people down. Um, so this uh, will basically make it such that in case, in some cases you won't be able to catch up to the person you're chasing and therefore you're going to miss out on some kills, which already happens on Samira sometimes uh, at the current state. So this is going to make that problem even worse, but overall uh, it's not the worst uh, nerf in the world. Um, we also have the Infernal Trigger nerf, where you get, instead of getting 30% movement speed reduction, you now get 40% movement speed reduction. Now, in my opinion, this is not as bad as the passive nerf, because um, normally when you're casting Infernal Trigger, you're normally in the middle of the enemy team anyways, because you've already eat into the middle of the team, so you can cast your um, ultimate, and normally you get a kill to, to reset your E, and then you can dash to the next person with your E. So normally, the movement speed reduction on your ult doesn't normally matter all that much. Although, of course, in some fringe cases, it does, of course, matter. Uh, but overall, I don't think the Infernal, Infernal Trigger nerf matters too much. I think the passive nerf is going to hurt a lot more. No nerfs in terms of damage, though, so I think she's still going to be pretty, pretty good. Alright, now Senna, her Q is getting buffed by... Um, 10 damage at all ranks as well as the extra 10% um, AD ratio now Senna apparently at one point was really strong because they nerfed her non-stop even though I felt she was pretty weak now they're actually buffing her damage on her Q so this is definitely going to help um, Senna in terms of basically just the damage of course it's just going to help her in terms of the damage and the healing is going to be up a little bit as well on the Q so really uh, nice buff to Senna I guess you could say. Now, Shivana somehow is getting a buff. I think she's actually really strong at the moment. I think she's one of the top junglers, but apparently the numbers say otherwise. Because she's getting a... She's basically getting her nerf on the burnout reverted back when they said that she was too strong. So she's getting back the 5 damage on the burnout, which as we know is a DOT. So this is going to trigger multiple times, not just once. So this is a pretty significant reversion. Okay, Varus. The, he's getting his W buffed. Active damage... Uh, of missing health ratio is basically going up by a couple of percentage points 1.5 to be exact based on your level so um, this is a minor buff and as well as the max channel um, ratio this is of course talking about your Q when you press your W it enhances your Q your piercing arrow so that charge is going up by 3% at all ranks so basically overall you're getting a pretty huge damage increase because a couple of percent here plus a couple of percent there is going to equate to quite a lot of damage so basically varus getting a quite a big damage buff whether you are building with lethality ap or attack speed so wukong getting a really huge buff as well i don't know why i think wukong is really strong now but he's getting uh instead of getting only three percent 
uh, increased damage per stack. He's getting 4%. That's a pretty huge buff. Pretty sure they nerfed that on him before back when he was strong like, like a year ago or something. And his golden staff heal is insane. His heal amount is doubled at low ranks. You max this first by the way. So at max rank, it's going from 60 to 90. And instead of getting 25% AD, you're getting 40% base um, AD. So this, what this basically means is instead of getting 25% of AD, this is affected by the items you build. You're getting 40% base AD instead. So this doesn't isn't affected by the items you build. So this is always going to stay the same. So uh, maybe it's not as big of a buff as I thought. But now it takes into account 16% bonus health instead of 10%. So here, it's in terms of the health, it's increased. In terms of the AD, it's decreased, but in terms of the base amount, it is increased. So overall, this should mean that he heals more. So yeah, basically he's going to heal more. Which, yeah, I don't quite know if he needed that. So anyways, Yasuo and Yone, the Wind Brothers, are getting some adjustments. Yasuo is getting um, eight, uh, one extra AD per level. Um, so in the, in the late game, he has a, a extra like 14, actually not 14, but here extra 13 AD. Um, not quite sure if he needed an, a buff, but apparently he's been real, really weak because he got like three buffs in a row. Not quite sure about that. I perma ban Yasuo, so I don't actually even fight him. So, anyways, Yone, uh, health per level is actually going up by seven, and, but the base AD he has is going down by four. Really strange number considering Riot likes six and twelve. But yeah, going down by four. Spirit Cleave max damage to monsters is going down at early ranks, but it's going up at late ranks. Basically, they're trying to kick Yone out of the jungle as well. Um, and obviously, this um, 50 damage, that's like 33% of, of what he used to do, um, is going to hurt his jungle clear a lot. And his Fate Sealed, his ulti, um, the, the damage is going down at the later two ranks, but at early ranks, it's still the same. Overall, I think these are very minor nerfs to Yone. I still think he's going to be one of the strongest champions in the game, because the nerfs are just not enough. Alright, Yumi... Now the shield duration, instead of being 5 seconds, it's infinite. The reason why they wanted to make this the case, they wanted people to play more around Yumi's passive of having to detach and auto-attack someone, but they realized that without the mana restore and only like the shield, people just don't detach at all. So this, uh, the change, what they wanted from the change didn't really come true. So they're reverting the change and now Yumi's shield is back to be infinite. Now, Yumi, in my opinion, has been in a really bad spot ever since the so-called mini rework, which we all know is just another way of saying a huge bunch of nerfs, uh, in Yumi's case at least. So, they're reverting her shield to be infinite. I think this is a really needed change, even though I hate Yumi, but I think this is a really needed change because she's way too weak at the moment and borderline unplayable. So, this is going to help her quite a bit. Now, Liandri's Torment apparently has been one of the most powerful mage items. Now, I'm not so sure about that. Maybe I'm just missing the train with this one, but I really didn't think it was that strong of an item. Anyways, apparently what they're giving it is they're giving it 5 more AP, reducing its health by 50, and halving its ma uh, base max health damage. So apparently, the max health damage was way too much. Now, I really, as I said, I don't know about that, but okay, um, that's a pretty pretty big nerf to Liandri's. So we got a couple of new skins, we got a couple of new accessories, and that is pretty much it. So anyways, um, there we have it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching the video, and goodbye.